Yo, I've got to document this immediately. Listen to me. So when you're getting your business off the ground, you are working constantly because you spend 40 hours a week paying the bills and then the other 40 hours is actually working on the business and learning and making mistakes and everything and cleaning up those mistakes. So you have to work an extra 40 hours just to make up for all the stuff that you don't know. You have to work 80 hours a week to get the business sustainable because you have this learning curve and you don't have the right clientele that's not paying right, you don't have the skill, there's so much. So that's why when you're getting a business off the ground you feel isolated and alone and like nobody understands you and you're going insane and you're not getting any sleep. You're probably not eating healthy. You might be eating way too much fast food because you're constantly on the go. It's very stressful. But then if you track the same person years down the road, things are going along smooth and they're like, what are you talking about? It's always been this way. It has not always been this way. We forget where we came from. So what I want to talk about very succinctly is that I made these promises to myself um, early on that when I finally got some money in the bank and some debt paid off, and back then to me it was like, when I get this amount of money in the bank and this debt paid off, just enough to breathe, the first thing that I'm going to do is invest in healthier eating. And then the next would be getting proper sleep again. Because what I said, you don't eat healthy and you don't get proper sleep. You're sleeping literally, some business owners sleep three to five hours a night. They're, they're working, they wake up in the middle of the night and work. If they don't, the business will fall apart, right? Um, so, but here's, here's what happens. If you've been broke your whole life and you grew up broke and struggling, when you finally get a little bit of money and I don't, you, get, you, 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 you land your first $20,000 client, you get 20 grand in the bank, you get 50 grand in the bank, wh whatever happens, this monkey mind that we have, this, this, old part of our brain wants to take the cookie and put it in our mouth and go, oh my God, oh my God, I have money. I can go buy a brand new truck. We can, I can pimp my life. We can actually upgrade and get the hell out of this little tiny apartment or trailer. I could buy that truck I've always wanted. Oh my God. And we start going out to eat and getting steak and doing these stupid things that you almost can't even help yourself because you've never had that your whole life. And finally it's right in front of you. And it's like, it's the perfect justification and excuse right but i remember uh, evan pagan in a in an amazing course i took it was a two thousand dollar online course he talked about when he finally started making a lot of money he had all that temptation he said you know what let me take that cookie and push it back instead of doing all those things that i could do let me use this little bit of extra money that i'm making to really dive in at a whole new level of precision let me invest in my education let me invest in healthier eating and getting better sleep. I think in a great investment, this sounds crazy. If you're sleeping on an old crummy mattress that was a hand-me-down mattress that you got from like like your mom, your dad, or your aunt, and your uncle, and you've been sleeping on this mattress for 15 years and it's freaking got bed bugs and it's stiff, you might not even be aware you're getting horrible sleep because you don't have a great mattress. Investing like... I don't know, you name it, one to $5,000, depending on how much you can afford on a really good luxury, high quality mattress to improve the quality of your sleep so you get deeper REM sleep. Um, if you study neuroscience and sleep studies and closing on the windows and shades, I sleep with an eye mask on. It's kind of silly because in in the morning, if the sun or, or even a, a night, a, a street light outside is going through, something as simple as, I know I'm digressing here, but listen, because this is how specific you get, something as simple as the light on a smoke detector in the other room hits the rods and cones in your eyes and then tells the parts of your brain to release the chemicals to be awake. If you wake up in the middle of the night to, to go pee, like I literally put, have the eye mask if I just go to use the bathroom and I try to keep my eyes squinted so no light gets in so I can stay in that sleep mode because I'm a very sensitive sleeper and I've, I've, I've been very sleep deprived so I've become aware of getting healthy sleep and putting sleep as a priority now proper um, because there's four key areas. This is, I am digressing, I'm aware, but listen, proper sleep, proper nutrition, proper hydration, and then exercise. So those are the four fundamentals of your body. And if you ever get really stressed out, immediately make sure you're drinking lots of clean, healthy water. 
you're you're not eating a bunch of fast food you're eating healthy you're getting proper sleep and you're going and getting exercise that can reduce stress levels immediately to get you back to baseline right if you're if you're in a, in a, in a, a negative so but with all that being said once you get your business going you finally get some clients and you get some money investing in things like um, back into your education so instead of upgrading your lifestyle um, what if you invested in online courses and coaching and consulting and education and private group workshops? You got off of so much social media and started finding and, and learning what do the people do at a higher level that actually got them better results. You can stand on the shoulders of giants, stand on the shoulders of giants and learn from other people's mistakes. You can maybe fly across the country and go to some three, four day workshop seminar and do deep dive intensive um, taking notes and learning from other business owners how they've systematized their business or something like that. Um, you know, instead of spending the winter lying around playing video games and scrolling on social media, then kicking yourself for it in the spring. I mean, for me, it took me many, many years of trial and error. I, I'm nowhere where I want to be. I'm not talking like I'm the dude. I'm not the message. I'm just the messenger. So don't shoot the messenger. But uh, like, like the winter would come. And I would be like, that's it, this winter I'm going to do all these things. And then, and I, did, I do a lot of stuff, I'm a workaholic, right? I've, I think I have really insanely good work ethic. But the temptation to like lay around and scroll on social media and not do the things I was supposed to do, and here's the point I'm making, would overcome me and then I would fall into depression, go into seasonal depression, and then the next summer, um, if you've been through this enough in your life and you're, and you're old enough or wise enough, then you fall into the trappings of the summer um, and then you're burned out by August and it's just the cycle repeats. And so if, until we get into the deeper core issues and finding out what are the systems and subsystems that are causing this, I believe that if you look at your life holistically and, and practically, you can see that, oh my God, you haven't spent enough time with your dad and taking him out to lunch. You have a grandma that you gotta go, you gotta see people in your family. You gotta get through Christmas. You have to, rekindle the relationship with your loved ones or with your spouse. Maybe there's a part of you that's suffering and starving on the inside that literally requires, this sounds almost in the opposite of what I just said, but to literally sleep until noon and lay around in your pajamas all day, actually reading books and watching movies and, and sipping hot cocoa and looking out the window and feeling cozy in, inside of your home or even if you live in an apartment or whatever anywhere you live because I've lived in apartments trailer parks I've lived in 32 homes I've been homeless we slept in a couple homeless shelters when I was a kid I've slept in my car like <laughs> like but what I mean is allowing yourself to feel safe and secure and uh cry out anything from the past and get on the phone with old friends and forgive them like we we're we're told and we're conditioned that that's bad and that's lazy and that's wrong but i believe that there's a part inside of you that craves the safety and security to know that you're okay and you're on solid footing and foundation and you have people that actually love you and care about you and support you for real and the reciprocal of that is drawing healthy effing lines and in, in the sand and boundaries with people who disrespect you either that be not only you know uh, anybody, but including friends and family, and not tolerating, because you, you deserve what you tolerate. So tolerating the disrespect from others also allows it to, it to build up in your nervous system, and then you don't respect yourself, and then it eats you up. So you have all these things going on subliminally and, un subliminally and unconsciously in the background of your life that are hogging up bandwidth, right? Imagine if you're an electrical com computer system, like you ever see that thing, it's like the Tesla globe, it's and you could touch it and then the electricity touches your finger wherever you go. What if these things are anchoring in a negative way and they're draining us from energy unconsciously because we have these unresolved issues in our lives? So people turn to addictions and things like that to numb their pain and so because it's hard to face. So there's this whole uncovering of the jawbreaker process of getting to the core of issues before sometimes before you can actually make real progress, you gotta go backwards. Sometimes you gotta take a couple steps back to take a quantum leap forward. You know, one step forward, two steps back. It feels that way. But if you see it all, if you zoom out, when in doubt, zoom out. If you zoom out, you can actually see you're actually moving forward the entire time. So if, if you feel burned out 
and like you're trying to like get your business to the next level you're trying to make money and you're getting like depressed because the harder you try is the more and more and more it seems it's working against you and diminished it can feel so daunting you can fall back into depression because those deep deep parts inside of you that need to be reju need to be rejuvenated replenished watered and have light shine into those parts of your life because you can flower and know that you know, I said that sounds like a feminine thing to say, flower that you are loved. But that's that's a real, real thing. Like I grew up feeling abandoned and like I was stupid and thinking I had uh, my my biggest fear is that I'm stupid and that I'm incompetent. And I used to have I worked a bunch of dead end jobs where people have treated me like crap and literally called me uh, words you can't say on on social media that I walked around thinking that I was stupid, right? And it wasn't until I started my own business and realized that I wasn't stupid. Um, I'm digressing here. This is a deep, deep thing. I, put, I took this online course by John Asaraf called Winning the Game of Fear. And he goes deep into neuroscience and psychology and meditations. And that, that, that online course was like 60 hours long and it changed my life. I spent the winter of 2017 just sitting in bed for like a month straight with a cup of cocoa. <laughs> hot cocoa or coffee or whatever time I did or tea with headphones on in a very, very peaceful, serene place. And I put a lot of other, I save up the, save up money for the winter. And I would go into these deep dive meditations of relieving a lot of this internal pain and suffering uh, in my life that was holding me back from getting to the next level. And I realized for me, it was unworthiness. You know, worthiness is a huge thing. There's people at work 50 60 hours a week their whole lives and yet they never make any more money they don't upgrade their life because they actually just feel unworthy so why do you feel unworthy is it a generational curse is it some generational trauma is your parents or your parents parents grew up in the depression era and they've you know at the time they did what they had to do but now is this brainwashing making you totally afraid or afraid to um, like what if you could totally afford it now and you're literally afraid to just upgrade your work vehicle and stop driving an old crappy truck and you're not even aware that actually just going and getting a new truck this whole time you're going to be able to easily afford it like um, here quick quick story when I finally started driving brand new trucks I was so terrified I felt so unworthy and the only reason I even got a new truck is because I actually crunched the math and I had a logical justification mathematically that it was actually costing me the same amount of money to keep repair broken down trucks and then in the shop that we couldn't work that day and then the truck then this blew up Dude, it was thousands of dollars a year and when I crunched the numbers I was like wait a second if this keeps going and I keep running a landscape business my trucks being in the shop I could literally just drive around in a brand new truck and even make more money because the downtime doesn't exist. But most importantly of, of all, the peace of mind, knowing I can just drive and I'm not scared that the thing's going to blow up and me be stuck on the side of the road again. What's that peace of mind worth? So I had to get all these angles to get leverage on myself. And the day I'm driving home from the dealership in a brand new truck, tears in my eyes. It took me a while to get used to that, and now I was like, well, I'm actually considering buying a used truck uh, for, like, cash now because I'm sick of making payments. But <laughs> funny how you go back when you actually have the choice. But what I mean is, like, sometimes you can, you, you're you actually ready. You don't need any more traumas or emergencies in your life. You've already been through so much hell. You've already earned your stars and stripes, and you're actually ready to upgrade now, and you're just being a little bitch, and you're not, you're not aware that... It's time for you to not only just step into the future, the future is pulling you and you're holding on to the past. And all you got to do is just cut the rope and let go of the anchors and go. <sighs> <laughs> it's like you're holding a beach ball underneath the water and you're fighting and you're struggling, and you're struggling and you're fighting. And finally, what happens when you let go of a beach ball? Boom. It just floats up to the top. It pops up to the top and it floats. Ah, Why? Because that's its natural state. Your natural state is abundance. It's clarity. It's free from all types of fic friction. And fiction, too. So are you living in a fiction? How do you get out of the mental fog? Right? 
I believe the fastest way you can do it is get around highly uh, encouraging, positive, enthusiastic people who do not live in their excuses. They don't accept the denial. They don't, they don't live in a scarcity mindset. And they cajole you and they challenge you to step up to the, the plate and be awake and aware to your own life and how abundant it actually is. And after that, you just got to put one foot in front of the other. It's all out there for you right now. And you know what? It's not out there anymore. It's right here. It's right here. It's all around you. All the success and life and brilliance you wish to have and achieve, it's all inside of you, just waiting to unfold. And, and you have the key. Turn the key and open the door and just let it all flow. Yeah, dog.